Okay, I want to start off and thank everybody for joining myself uh, and our special guest, Charles Sells, for today's presentation of Recession Proof Investing with the PIP Group. Um, I just want to introduce myself. My name is William Mucker. I'm a client executive at Camo Plan, and my job is basically to help investors like yourselves out um, with their self-directed journey and um, educate people. So we're going to start off with a brief presentation on, on Camaplan, what, what I do every day and what uh, the rest of the hardworking staff at Camaplan does. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Charles where he'll give you his presentation. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. So this is just a little disclosure statement we have to start off with. This was put together by a clever attorney somewhere, basically just letting you know that we at Camaplan, we're not attorneys, we're not financial advisors, um, we're not trying to sell anything, uh, and we're not licensed to give that uh, financial advice, uh, accounting advice, or uh, any of that advice, but we welcome you to bring your financial team on board with us, uh, link us through uh, email threads or conference calls, and we'll be happy to make sure that your investment gets done in accordance to all of those professionals' suggestions. Um, we're a neutral third-party administrator. We do not offer any investments. We do not endorse anybody or sell anything, so you won't get an email from us um, sh uh, selling that shiny new investment. Um, we're just here to keep record of all the transactions and help facilitate those transactions uh, in those self-directed IRAs. So what is a self-directed IRA? A lot, it's Probably America's best kept secret, only started around 1974 um, when they passed the ERISA Act, so it's relatively new. Um, basically what a self-directed IRA is, um, you'll go to Charles, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard, and they'll tell you you have a self-directed IRA, um, but they'll just say you can direct your investments into anything off of this list. With a truly self-directed IRA like uh, Camaplan offers, uh, we don't have a list. You bring your investments to us. Um, we make sure we help you make sure it's structured the, the proper way, it's vested the proper way, and we'll help facilitate those transactions and keep record uh, and provide you with tax documents for you and your CPA at the end of every year. What can you invest in with a self-directed IRA? It's probably the biggest question I get all the time. These are some of the popular um, or the most popular categories I see our clients investing in every day, um, but you're not limited to these. Biggest thing uh, by far is real estate. You go out and your IRA buys 123 Main Street. Uh, you fix it up or your IRA fixes it up and then you're, you're able to collect those rental checks in place of your normal interest and dividends that you would, that you would have with your uh, traditional IRA. Precious metals is another option. A lot of people who want to diversify their retirement profile or, or their retirement portfolio, excuse me, go with precious metals good diversifying technique. Notes and mortgages, you can turn your IRA into a mini bank, just like, you know, you'll go around the city, you'll see all the biggest buildings in that city are the banks. So they must be doing something right. So basically you're going to, your IRA will be the lender and you find your borrower, we'll send the money out to your borrower uh, and then you'll collect the interest and principal payments in place of those interest and dividend payments from the traditional IRAs that I mentioned before. And the last thing, uh, Last category I specifically mentioned is private placement. Um, with your normal IRA, you're going out and you're purchasing, you know, shares of companies that are publicly publicly traded. But what about the companies that are not publicly traded? Before Facebook and Amazon, Tesla, before they all went public, you would need to invest in them through what is called a private placement, where you purchase shares of a privately traded company, and then you'll get those interest and dividend payments similar to the, the publicly traded companies. There's uh, the bullet point for other. I've seen a lot of crazy things at Camaplan. People have invested into sheep and sold the wool. People have bought trees and sold the fruit. Um, that gets a little complicated, but um, you're definitely not limited to these categories. Um, types of self-directed plans. People always ask me, how can I open my self-directed IRA? There is no quote unquote self-directed IRA. Self-directed is just an adjective. The accounts we administer are the same accounts you'll have at Schwab, Fidelity, um, Vanguard and all of those custodians, it's just the investments that change. So the same investments that you can do in your traditional or your tax deferred IRAs or retirement plans, 
you can do in your Roth IRA or your post-tax retirement plan. And almost all of these accounts here are offered at CAMA plan, um, except uh, for the, the spousal IRA. This is a great slide, and I have an even better visual in the following slide. You have $100,000, what do you get to keep? So with taxes, these are different avenues of investing or earning money. Uh, with your W-2 salary, you earn $100,000, but you're paying taxes on that income, to federal, state, local, Social Security, Medi Medicare, and then your employer has to pay, uh, or if you're the employer, you'll have to pay it. So it dwindles down to about 40% of that money is going to Uncle Sam to help him keep the lights on. So you're only left with $60,000. With your passive income, you're taxed at a little lower rate, at a, about a 25% rate in this example, and that $100,000 goes down to $75,000. Now, with your tax deferred and tax free accounts, like your traditional and Roth IRAs, that $100,000 earned in that vehicle is $100,000 cash. There's an asterisk next to the traditional um, or tax deferred accounts because that $100,000 is going to be taxed on the back end. With the Roth, you already paid your taxes up front, so that $100,000 is $100,000 cash in your pocket. Nice little animation there. Um, this slide is probably my favorite slide. This is uh, a chart that visualizes the three different avenues, tax-free, tax-deferred, and taxable income. All three, uh, let's just say you, a friend, and a cousin decided to invest $50,000 into a private placement where you earn a, you're at a 30% tax bracket each and you're each earning a 10% rate of return on that investment and what happens over 40 years. You decided to invest with your taxable income in the, poor, the purple, uh, your friend decided to invest in the green with their tax deferred account or their traditional IRA, uh, SEP IRA, simple IRA. And then your cousin decided to invest with their Roth IRA or their tax-free IRA. Forty years down the line, it's important to note that your friend uh, and your cousin both earned $2.2 million off of that $50,000. It's just the green paid $70,000 or, excuse me, $700,000 in taxes when they went to go and take that out. Now you, who just decided just to invest their taxable income, only made that $700,000, and that $1.5 million was lost to taxes. Um, so I hope your, your cousin or your friend you know, is, is nice and takes you out on vacation or something. With self-directed IRAs, there are some rules. Uh, these rules apply to all IRAs, not just self-directed IRAs, but you don't really run into them as often with you know, your traditional stocks and bonds and ETFs and they're more prevalent in alternative investments like the ones you'll be doing out of your self-directed IRA. Um, basically, there's no self-dealing or sweat equity. You and anybody of lineal ascent or descent on this chart um, that is in, in orange or yellow or however you see it, um, are prohibited from giving a benefit to the IRA, providing a benefit to the IRA, or receiving a benefit from the IRA. What that means is by providing a benefit, let's say you purchase 123 Main Street in your IRA, but you're an electrician. The lights uh, aren't working or there's an electrical problem. You want to go in there and work on it yourself, but you can't because you're providing a benefit to the IRA. Um, the IRS is crazy, but I like to think of it as you're not paying the taxes on the income that you're earning through that, um, that investment. So they want you to go out and pay somebody who is going to pay the taxes on what they earn from that. And by receiving a benefit, obviously, if you purchase one to three Main Street with your IRA, you can't stay in there. Anybody of lineal A center descent can't live there. It has to be invest for investment purposes. Um, you can partner with these entities as long as you follow these rules, uh, but you can't receive those benefits, as I said. This is a general overview of the CAMA plan process. It looks a little convoluted, but it's actually pretty simple, and a lot of these steps are behind the scenes of us processing your paperwork. Basically, how it works is you'll open up an account similar to the tax status of the account you plan on funding it with. You'll do a transfer or rollover from that account, and we'll even help you through that process. Once the account's been funded, uh, you'll decide what investment you want to make, or you can come in with the investment uh, that you're, you're looking to do and you'll provide us with the supporting paperwork with our asset purchase directive, just a simple form that lets us know a little bit more about the investment uh, and how you'd like us to send the funds. We process that paperwork within two business days, and assuming everything's in good order, we'll release the funds to the investment provider the following day, 
and you'll be able to see that asset inside of your online portal and see all transactions that uh, are related to the IRA and that specific investment. And then basically we start to put, you start to collect uh, the income, the rental income, the interest, dividend payments, uh, and then you basically rinse and repeat. Your IRA snowballs and you can do more and more of this as you, as you grow. I want to put up my contact information up here for just a second. Um, I already mentioned my name is William Mucker. I'm a client executive. Uh, for everybody who's attending us today, attending this presentation today, um, we're offering that we will waive the $50 application fee. All you have to do is email me or call in and speak to one of our representatives and just say that you were on the webinar with the PIP group and we'll make sure that those, that fee is waived. Uh, and also, if we don't get to um, all of the questions today, I will personally be reaching out to everybody who attended um, so you can have a one-on-one -on -one with me and we'll go over a you know, personal consultation. And if you decide that you want to go ahead and do it, we'll open the account online, uh, online together on the phone and I'll go ahead and waive that $50 application fee on the spot. My email is wmucker at camoplan.com and you can also reach us at 215-283-2868. If I don't speak with you, you can also speak to one of our other representatives or I will definitely get back to you as soon as I'm available. And without further ado, I rambled for a little bit, um, but I'm sure you're all here to listen to Charles speak about his experience, his knowledge, um, Charles is the CEO of the PIP Group. He started at a ripe young age of 23, investing in tax liens for the benefits we all know and love. At 26, Charles decided to go solo and start his own company, which is now the PIP Group, which has been uh, in business for over 20 years and has done over hundreds of millions of dollars in distressed real estate investments on behalf of nearly 1,000 investors worldwide. And uh, I think that's enough for you to, to get excited for what he has to present for you today. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to you, Charles. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for everybody that's here participating. Uh, we're going to switch over to my screen real quick here. Uh, get the right screen. Okay. Uh, again, thank you everybody for uh, for attending today, and um, I hope to provide you from some good information. I have a lot of information to provide, so I talk kind of fast. If you'll if you'll just stick your questions into the question box, uh, I'll pass this back over to uh, William in just a little while, and we can answer what, as many questions as we possibly have the time to answer. Um, so, what we're talking about today: recession-proof investment investing. I'm sure a lot of you are like, huh. Well, that's, that's interesting considering the forecast of our economy uh, right now, but I've actually been doing this a long time, uh, long before there was even the first recession. Uh, so as William said, I've, I've been in business almost 20 years. So I started out when the economy was actually booming uh, as uh, internet technology was, was first blossoming. Uh, so followers on this call that that have seen my past presentations i've always said that when it comes to our fix and flips uh that we invest in areas with an economic push that would likely not be impacted by another financial crisis now i have to actually eat those words and say we invest in areas with an economic push that will not be in fact impacted by the incoming financial crisis. It's, it's simply, you know, an inevitable uh, that it's going to happen uh, regardless of whether your opinion is we're going to have a, you know, a quick down and a quick back up. Um, you know, there's 43 million people out of work as of today, I believe uh, is, is today's number. Um, and you know, the, the stimulus that they've put into play, uh, it just, it isn't, it isn't going to cover it. And we can't just keep printing money. So uh, at some point something's got to happen. Uh, William, William already covered this, but I'll just touch on it a little bit. Uh, you know, again, I did start at 23, uh, and and you know, the four thousand dollars I, I I got when I was 26, I actually borrowed that was to set up my LLC and do a little bit of advertising, and I was off and running. Uh, so so it has been baby steps. Uh, you know, I didn't I didn't get to this level overnight. Uh, you know, I worked three jobs while I worked on this from 12 in the morning till, you know, four in the morning and then back up to, to do to do the nine to five grind the next day. Uh, so it, it took a long time to get here, but uh, that's that's why we're here and why we're relevant. You know, as, as William mentioned, you know, we do offer uh, and we've serviced portfolios ranging in size from 50,000 to, you know, doing auditing 
processes for hedge funds as high as 150 million. Um, we, we do work with fund, hedge funds as well, uh, but they're more like you know, five, $10 million funds. We are an accredited BB uh, rated company. Why do you care? Uh, I didn't realize it until we went to go get it. I, I'll self admit that I was one of those guys that uh, thought the BBB was you know, pay to play. Um, I learned a lot different when I actually wanted to go get that rating uh, and that the less than 10% of private businesses actually qualify for it. But more importantly, when you're a company like us, you're gonna have employees and staff that are gonna be a little grizzled. And with the internet out there these days, you can go on any blog spot uh, when, you're, when you're a company like us and, and you know, a former employee has posted something. So we decided to get the BBB because it's the, it's the one tried and true that has been around forever that, that people recognize. Uh, so just wanna put that out there. Okay, so what we do, on behalf of PIP Group clients, uh, we provide distressed real estate investment opportunity. So that's investing in distressed real estate passively, which means we essentially do all the work for you uh, and, and the way we earn our commission is based on the performance of that investment. So we're in tax liens and tax deeds, uh, we're in pre-deeds and pre-foreclosures, uh, and we're in bank foreclosures, which is what we're primarily gonna focus on today, uh, is, is what's com coming down the pipeline. And tax liens is gonna be a great vehicle as well, uh, but for this presentation, uh, I'm a tangible kind of guy, so I like to put my hands on a property. Uh, so that's, that's what I want to talk about. We are not an investment fund or pooled investment. That means you own 100% of the investment. Uh, that's why we're on this call with Cama Plan because they require everything to be Cama Plan, FBO, John Smith. Uh, so so that's, that's your investment. It's in your name. We're a servicing agent doing all the work on your behalf. Quickly, I'm going to jump off topics and, and just say on a future broadcast, uh, if Cama Plan has us back, uh, or if you go to our website, you can learn more about Illinois tax sales. They are going to be big. They do offer very attractive uh, returns on redemption. They can compound to be as high as 100%, 108% of your uh, investment, as you can see in this redemption report. Uh, on the top line, you have 884.52, and what was actually earned on that principal was 955.28. Uh, again, I'm going to just touch on that a little bit. If you want more information, go to pipgroup.com uh, and you can get more, or we'll do a presentation specifically talking about Illinois tax liens uh, and a future broadcast. So recession-proof investing. I've been doing it for 23 years. Uh, so I'm 46 now, so I've literally been doing it for half of my life. Uh, history repeats itself. What made me so successful uh, in the middle of 2008 through 2015 uh, was I always focused our investments on you know, what, what, what the government's going to do to step in and and repair this problem if you will and it repeats itself again and again and again so what they do is they take care of the vas the huds the fhas uh you know all all of those are, are who get the preferential treatment first so those are the kind of homes we want to buy we don't want to buy five hundred thousand six hundred thousand dollar homes that you know require specific uh, purchaser, we want we want to buy, you know, gobs and gobs and gobs of of first time uh, home buyers, that sort of thing. When Obama first got into office, he did the first time home home buyers program, where he they essentially got a four thousand dollar credit on on the uh, on the pr traditional mortgage. So that's what we focus on, and that's that's all we've ever focused on and why we were able to be so successful during that economy. Uh, so this is what phase three COVID stimulus came out with. Uh, and, you know, things are happening in this country so fast uh, between the, the rioting and, and the, the COVID uh, that, you know, my, my slides have, have essentially uh, gone out of date already. But this is the, the package they're putting together. And it's, it's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, it's, it's really not much money at all. So what's going to happen is, is, you know, yes, foreclosures have been halted for 60 days. We're at that 60 day mark now. Uh, and there hasn't been any, any more talk about what's coming down the pipe next. Uh, and so so what's coming down the pipe next is banks are, they need their cash as well. They need the cash flow. They're going to have to do what they did in the last recession. They're going to have to start foreclosing. Um, 
what will save that is you. Private money is what saved us from the last recession, and private money is what's going to save us from the next recession uh, or depression, whatever is coming down the line for us. Uh, and you know, there's there's us that have been in this business as long as I have, and are as knowledgeable about this as I am. And they have you know a completely different opinion of what I think is going to happen versus what they think is going to happen. What I know is inevitable is we're going to have a rise in foreclosures. This business is a good business in an up market. It's a great business in a down market. Uh, so so we're, we're preparing for, if it's not a wave, at least a ripple. Uh, but you know, my, my thoughts are is it's gonna be a, a wave. So where are the deals? Where do you find these properties? Fix and flips became so popular thanks to all those great fake HGTV shows that everybody wanted to get in them. What that created was, uh, you know, this, wave of coaches and workshops and wholesalers and, and all this gobbledygook that really doesn't help the industry, nor are you going to be successful by listening to any of that program that's, that's out there. So we've always, always you know, beat feet, you know, got out there and done it the hard way. And we still do it the hard way. The picture you're looking at here is where we acquire probably 80% of our properties. Uh, this is a live auction. This is in Savannah, Georgia. And those arrows I have there, those are four different auctions for foreclosures going on at the same time. You know, the guy here on your right in blue, you notice nobody's really listening to him, but he's actually reading off. He's there every Tuesday, first Tuesday every month. He's actually reading off the, the legal uh, legalese for a, a property foreclosure. That's what he does. He reads it off. If somebody has done their due diligence and is interested in something he's reading off, they would be standing in front of him making a bid. Uh, so that's, that's what's going on there. That's where we get most of our properties. We also get them from probate. Uh, a lot of these, a lot of these properties go, you know, they they go into an estate after, after a death and uh, you know, once, once the probate settled it out and, and the family member gets it, they don't know what to do with it. Uh, you know, they, now they're having to deal with the taxes on it and whatnot. So, so you can pick up a lot of properties through probate. It's a long, arduous process, but when you build a pipeline like we have at this point, you know, we have stuff that we see comes up on probate this week. We know it could be a year down the road that we're actually going to acquire something like that. But, uh, you know, it's in the pipeline, which is all we really care about. This is an example of what the probate leads looked like uh, when I first started putting this presentation together. Uh, I did this one four, no, eight weeks ago. So these were the probate leads we had at that time. Um, and you notice the prices look really low, which is, again, we like that. We want to be selling to first time home buyers, uh, veterans, and, and I'll call it 98, 99.9% .9 of the country, the, the, the blue collar working class folks in the country. Uh, so that's, that's our target market and that's all we do. Because we're so big in the markets that we operate in, we get job site inquiries too. So. You know, we may, we may just be on site and, you know, the lady from across the street is checking on you know, her, her renters or whatnot. And she may say, hey, their rent's up in, uh, you know, 60 days. Would you guys be interested in buying the house? We get a lot of those because we do so much volume uh, that we're known without, throughout the cities that we operate in. We also do canvas, canvassing and skip tracing. Uh, at least twice a twice a month uh, we will go drive neighborhoods uh, that we're investing in and see if a new you know condom uh, con condemption order has been put up um, and and make calls out to those folks and say hey look you know let us take this burden off you it has it has investment potential for us to clean up the street and turn this property around and essentially that's what we're doing is, is cleaning up distressed neighborhoods all right, so look, let's look at recession proof start to finish uh, on a flip. So the ARV, that's after repair value, is $169,000 on this house. Doesn't look like much, I know, uh, but that's the ARV. So that's after we do all the work that's involved in, in, in the project. Uh, it's typical of what we look at for, uh, you know, it's, it's typical of what we acquire. Uh, and I know this scares a lot of people on the call, but 
these are the money makers. It's not, it's not the big lavish where you have to deal with granite and, and all those. We have some of those on our books and they stay on our books, unfortunately. Uh, this, is, this is the, you know, the meat and potatoes, the bread and butter uh, to, to what you do. Um, so this, this was us going into the property. Uh, we had just acquired it from, from uh, that foreclosure auction I showed you. Uh, and unfortunately, people were actually living in these kind of conditions. Uh, and I can hear the gasps through the, through the headphones. Uh, this is what I do these lives. It's like, oh, no. Uh, the pictures are kind of grainy because the house was boarded up. But this was the condition when we got in there. As we got through the project, uh, my, um, my guy called me. Essentially, what we do in that house is, is you know, we, we clean up the walls. We get out the bathrooms. And, and we essentially you know, redo the drywall, paint, lipstick, freshen it up, modernize it, and get out. This particular one uh, is, it was, was a little different. We started the roof on the front. My guy called me, who was, who was the lead contractor on the job, and said, hey, we have a carpentry problem. Uh, could you come down here and take a look? I said, yeah, 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 I'll be, I'll, I'll be down in a couple of days. I'll come take a look. Uh, this was the carpentry problem we had. Um, the house essentially had to be gutted. Uh, and and this, this is the extreme side of what we do, but I wanted to share the extreme side because you can still see that we made a great profit on this property regardless of this situation. Now, I'll stop here for a minute and say, because it's we're talking about SDRA investments, you may have a limited amount of capital in that SDRA. And, and if you said, you know what, Charles, I want to invest $100,000. Uh, I've got $100,000 in my, my IRA. That's all, that's all I can invest. And let's say this, this mess cost us $150,000. Well, it's on, the onus is on PIP uh, to, to pay those additional costs to bring this up to, to be sold. And essentially what we do is, is we handle that, um, you know, even as good as we are, we still get caught by surprises. Uh, and we'll talk about that at the last slide. Uh, but, but the onus is on us to take care of this. And then essentially what we'll do is we'll collect the, the, the costs that we had to put into the property uh, to bring it up to standards and, and get it sold. Uh, so that's, that's something I definitely want to point out to you guys. But anyhow, it was a complete disaster, a complete mess. Uh, you know, this guy was trying to figure out if we should burn it down or what to do with it. Um, and this is what we turned it into. I mean, it turned out to be a great property, a beautiful property. Uh, and uh, it required a little more in finishes. But the, there should be numbers that are supposed to pop up on this slide. Uh, but the numbers that should pop up on this slide show that the profit, the gross profit on the investment was $53,000. We purchased the property for $33,000. Uh, so, so we put about 80 into it, uh, and, and, you know, with attorney's fees and whatnot, that's, that's how it came out. Uh, but this is, this is the same house. You saw the lady standing in the picture before was right there in that, that, uh, little entryway there. Uh, and, and this is what we do. This is what we do every day. If, if that guy with the beard was standing in the sink, that's essentially the wall he was looking at. So we can take what looks to be a teardown. Uh, and a complete loss and, and turn it around very quickly, very cleanly and, and very, with a lot of profit. There it is. Okay. So, uh, ARV 169 repairs, 82.5 purchase price actual was 33,000. That was, that was all in, in the purchase price. Uh, so the gross profit profit on it was $53,500. So that's a fix and flip. That's a recession proof fix and flip from start to finish. So again, we're not focusing on you know, brick and mortar necessarily. Uh, we're not focusing on multifamily. We're focusing on what's going to sell regardless of what's going on in the economy. People still need a place to live. Uh, so, and, and when the government steps in, when we have a problem, as we learned from 2008, they take care of the lower end class first. So low to low middle is who gets all the stimulus benefits. Uh, the elderly get them too, but not quite as much as the low to low middle. Uh, so that's, that's where our focus is, and that's where we think things are going to go again. Um, what also makes us recession proof is we buy in areas that are off the radar. Uh, so what do I mean by that? I've been talking about Savannah. We'll talk a little bit more about Savannah in a minute. But what I'm talking about is areas that big money is not in. Uh, if, if you're interested in real estate or you're investing in real estate, you've probably heard of Blackstone. Uh, reputable company. They buy 
when, when Dallas was, was coming back from the last recession, well, guess who was in there buying most of Dallas? Uh, when Atlanta was coming back, guess who was buying most of Atlanta? Uh, Blackstone was. Uh, so they became a very, as far as the industry is concerned, a very household name, if you will. Um, so we can't and you can't be successful in this business and work on the kind of margins that Blackstone works on. So they need volume to be able to hit their margins uh, because they're, they're, they're smaller on a per property basis. So they need more properties, more volume. So they stick to the big cities. Uh, we stick to the smaller cities. So we say no to the entire state of Florida. Uh, we say no to San Antonio, Dallas, and Atlanta. Uh, the areas that we're very active in right now and we're actually getting ready to expand in anticipation of what's going on uh, but the areas we're active in now are Savannah, Greensboro, North Carolina, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and Augusta, Georgia. Uh, so so you know, Blackstone and those big funds, they're, they're not going to touch that stuff. So we also, to be recession-proof, we want homes that easily qualify to first-time buyers. I mentioned government lending programs and grants. So I mentioned uh, the first time home buyer credit of $4,000 uh, when, when Obama took office. We want homes that are going to qualify easily for that kind of stuff. So that's where our focus is. Um, you know, so nothing, nothing brand new or anything like that. Um, we also buy homes that don't require upgraded finishes typically. Uh, so no granite. We're just putting in Formica countertops. It looks really nice. You saw the one that I showed you. Uh, it looks really nice. It looks modern. It looks new. Uh, but you're, you're saving an enormous cost by not getting it emotionally invested in that property. Uh, this is a big one. Homes that would cash flow well if lenders stop lending. Again, we don't know what's going to happen yet. And, and we all have our own opinion of what's going to happen. But what happened last time is the banks just didn't have the cash flow. They had the assets. They didn't have the cash flow. So they, they essentially couldn't lend, uh, if you will. So this particular property did sell. But let's just, I, I'm using it as an example where, uh, you know, if, if we couldn't get it sold, and then we said, okay, let's put a long-term renter in there. What's, what's it going to generate for me as a long-term renter? Uh, so the total investment on this one was 101. The net profit was 24,526. But if we were stuck with it, it I know easily it would rent rented for $1,800 a month. And that comes out to 21,6 a year or a 21.4% gross. Now, there's a lot of speculation of you know vacancy rates and and that sort of thing so you know assume you cut that in half uh to be aggressive in in your gross numbers or your expectations of what the net would be you're still over 10 percent. so that's the kind of properties that we want we want something that you know should we hit this recession uh and banks are are struggling to to lend money again that we can stick a renter in there quickly. There's gonna be a lot of renters, renters coming in the pipeline. Again, 43 million people out of business right now, or out of work right now. Uh, that, that, is, that, is a, that is a tidal wave of, of people. Uh, so, so they're gonna need help getting back on their feet. They're gonna be renting because they're gonna not have any choice but to give the homes back to the bank or do short sales, uh, whatever the case may be. So, so that, is, that is definitely something that is a play coming in the future. So if you're, if you're the guy that is a long-term buy hold kind of guy, uh, you know, opportunity is getting ready to get really good for you. Um, and, and if you're the fix and flip guy, uh, inventory is getting ready to get really good for us. Uh, so, so it's, it's, it is what it is. Um, but this is, this is, this is part of recession proof investing being protected, uh, whether it's going to be a flip or whether it's going to be a cash flow and hold it. And then you also have, I'm throwing this one in there because I've introduced you to the tax lien side of things. This is, this is a pre-deed. Uh, so essentially what this is, is a tax lien that has gone through the foreclosure process. The owner doesn't want to own it. Uh, he wants just his principal and his interest back. Uh, so what we do is we offload these properties uh, to buyers that are essentially just getting on their feet and just getting introduced to the investment. They might not qualify for our $100,000 minimum investment or in their SDIRA, they have $50,000, not $100,000. This would be a good opportunity for them. 
because uh, essentially you buy it right away. It's likely already occupied. It's not pretty. It doesn't need to be pretty. We, we like pretty numbers. We don't like pretty houses. Uh, we like to make our houses pretty when we flip them, but we're all about the numbers game. So this, this is one that actually was done uh, about eight weeks ago. Uh, and you can see those numbers there are, are, are really good. All right, so areas with an economic push. I mentioned that earlier, that, that that's, that's essentially what you're going for. So you know, as an example, when, when Amazon was, was whispering the idea of going to Raleigh, Raleigh Raleigh's you know, activity in real estate went nuts. Uh, it didn't last very long, but it went nuts. Um, but again, that's too big of a city. That's a city that Blackstone's gonna get involved in. Um, and that's not to say you might get one or two good opportunities, but again, if you can control and be the biggest guy in town, that's what you want to be. That's what we are. Um, so this comparison is actually pretty cool. Uh, most of my uh, prospects don't think it's as cool as I think it is, but I think it's pretty cool. So Charleston, South Carolina in the early 2000s uh, was a booming market, booming to the point that they were getting close to having um, a reputation like San Francisco, too expensive to live. That literally led up to COVID. Uh, now, now because of Boeing, uh, Boeing's there, they laid off so many people, uh, it's probably going to be affordable again. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's the way they, they came up from being a very distressed city was, was Boeing and MUSC. Boeing moved into Mount Pleasant, which obviously brought a lot of jobs. But MUSC, Medical University of South Carolina, essentially started buying up the big buildings in the city, and they made it the campus. So when they bought up the city, obviously everything around it became, uh, you know, medical students, housing, restaurants were restored, and, and they really turned the city completely around from where it was. Uh, I mean, streets that, you know, I couldn't walk down in 2004, are now you know bustling, uh, you know beautiful Victorian homes, you know, seven eight hundred thousand dollar homes that were uh, uh, boarded up and abandoned. Uh, so that was Charleston, South Carolina. Then Savannah is following the exact same path, and this is again we're talking about recession proof investing. What drives Savannah is Savannah College of Art and Design. They're doing the exact same thing on a slightly smaller scale. And why is this important? Because Savannah College of Art and Design is a private school. It's private money. It's, it's, it sounds small, but they, it, it, is the, it is the largest art and design school in the world. They have a campus in Hong Kong. They have a campus in Atlanta. They have a campus in Lacoste, France, uh, and, and one other that I'm not thinking of. But they, obviously, they started in Savannah. But they're doing the exact same thing. So we're buying all the properties around Savannah. Uh, and, and essentially fixing and flipping them. Now, if we get into a point where we're gonna have to fix and hold, that's okay. That, that recession-proof example I showed you, you know, the total investment all in was about $120,000. That property would rent right now for $1,200 a month. Uh, that's, that's a pretty substantial return uh, on, on $120,000 investment. So, so again, we're, we're, we're adding layers of what's making these recession proof, layer after layer after layer after layer, and we're going to keep adding layers. Um, I should probably take Gulfstream out. They just laid off about 130 people, but uh, again, it's, it's uh, nature of the beast. Um, the ports, the port projections are a little crazy. Uh, you know, they're, they're saying growth of 37% by 2030. Even if you cut that number in half, it's an astounding growth rate. Uh, so, so you know, we, I don't see it as being 37%, but I do see it as being uh, substantial. Local government assisted programs. So we talked about federal. Now we're going to talk about local. We have here in Savannah, well, I'm not in Savannah, I'm in Hilton Head, but uh, in the Savannah market, we have what's called the Dreammaker Home Buyer Assistance Program. So it allows for a lot of uh, variances uh, for, for you know, locals to, to be encouraged to move to the Savannah market. And that's huge when you have Savannah behind making Savannah better. Uh, you know, the Dreammaker 3, look at that. You know, you can get up to $60,000 in Savannah Gardens. Well, guess where? We're buying most of our properties. Um, 
and, and 30,000 in revitalized areas. So it's, it's, it's a huge program and you have one, two and three. And essentially what that does is it shows you one, two and three, it more or less covers the entire city. Uh, even, even the outer laying you know, su suburbs and, and, and the islands, uh, which, which really the islands don't need to qualify for this stuff uh, because they're, they're doing very well uh, regardless. This is another one, Teacher Next Door. Uh, and again, you see HUD Good Neighbor Next Door program. So again, we're using local and we're using federal. You know, got HUD, FHA, VA, USDA. Uh, so, so lots of, of programs. Again, we're stacking layer on layer on layer on layer uh, to protect ourselves from, from uh, you know, potential losses going uh going forward and then you have government assisted growth initiatives i touched on it for just a sentence a second ago but uh, savannah has a great one of the best um it, it's the developmental and renewal authority we don't want to tear down and rebuild we want we want to conserve the history that's in savannah so we want to keep as many of those properties as possible so there's a lot of uh, grants that you can use there are a lot of of you know certain programs that you can you can be part of that that help your investment not only be protect be protected but also more profitable uh, so we take advantage of, of all of those as well all right so this is my last slide like i said i talk real fast uh but you know i wanted to make sure that we could get, could get to your questions and i it always there's always crickets at the end of a, of a presentation and whether it's online or not uh, somebody Nobody wants to ask the first question. So I'm going to ask the first, first question. What is your fail rate? How often do you lose on deals? And this is a very important question because, you know, again, we've done hundreds of millions of dollars uh, and, and we buy a lot of properties every year and flip a lot of properties every year. We buy a lot of liens every year. So how often do we lose on our investments? Our, our loss, and again, this is our loss, not, not yours. The onus is on us. Uh, so on, we lose on about 7% of what we buy. Uh, so imagine if you're wanting to go do that yourself, you take your, the, the hard earned SDIRA money of hundred thousand dollars and you happen to fail on that first of, of that first deal, um, for whatever the reason. Uh, so, so again, it, that's our fail rate because we do so well, the other 97% of the time or 93% of the time, uh, we're able to essentially just make that a wash. So, so the, the, the investor would never lose, uh, but, but we might take a loss on the investment on behalf of the investor. Uh, so that's, that's pretty, much, uh, pretty much all I've got. Uh, do you want me to pass this back to you, William, or? Uh, no, we can just leave it there for the, the remainder for the Q&A section, um, and we can get started whenever you're ready. Uh, I can read off the questions. I have some questions um, for myself, and uh, we do have some questions in the chat. Okay. All right. Let's, let's hit them. All right. Let's uh, start off. I think this one has been in the uh, chat for a while. Uh, Philip asks, is the CAMA plan only for U.S. citizens with an IRA or 401k? You don't technically have to be a, a, a U.S. citizen. You just need to have a, an IRA, a, a, a 403B, 401K um, pension plan uh, in the U.S. So as long as you can have one of those plans to roll over or start, uh, and to start an IRA, you probably need to be a U.S. citizen. But other than that, uh, no, as long as you have an IRA or 401K or 403B in the States, then you should be fine to start. Um, we have a, I'll ask you a question. Um, so can you tell me other, anybody, is there anybody else? Uh, what you're doing is actually seems very unique. Is, do you know of anybody else who's doing what you're doing and, and what sets you apart from them? So there, there, there are a few doing what we do. Um, and I don't, I don't call them competitors because we each, we each pick our, our markets based on, you know, our own objectives, if you will. Um, and one, one that comes to mind is uh, uh, Marco Santarelli. And he, he does cash flow properties primarily, I believe, I'm, don't quote me on this, but I believe in Detroit. Uh, but, but what we do is, is unique, it's very unique. And it's been unique since, since we started this uh, years and years and years ago. And um, you know, the, there's, the, there, there 
somebody did do a study about five years ago uh, about companies like mine, and they had a shelf life of like six years. Uh, and the per reason for that shelf life of six years is because they were, um, you know, they were exaggerating promises and under delivering. Uh, and we try to do the uh, the opposite. I mean, some of some of our returns are, are astounding. Uh, but what we always try to bring to the table is transparency. Uh, like in those taxing slides, uh, I, I, I the those were a little old. I like to I like to provide examples that are within six months. But I literally plug those in an hour before our call. Uh, you know, just to say that we're in that is that realm as well. Uh, but. Um, yeah, there's 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 only a few of us out there that actually do it this way. Okay, um, we actually have a lot of questions pouring in right now, um, so we're, I'm going to go straight to the uh, the registrants' questions, the attendees, the audience, uh, and then we'll bounce back and forth. Okay, uh, an anonymous attendee asks, "Is it better to invest in mortgage notes with a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA?" That has everything to do with your financial background. Um, Personally, for younger people and myself, I'm partial to the Roth IRAs because um, you saw the slides at the beginning of the presentation that $50,000 turned into $2.2 million cash free that you're able to use. You can open Roths up for family members. You can open up a Roth for a child. Um, I personally uh, wish my parents started me a Roth when I was younger. I probably wouldn't be you know, speaking to you today. Uh, we have a lot of um, people opening up accounts for their children AMA plan, especially specifically Roth, um, and you know I don't like to say it, but they have more money in their Roth IRA than I, I have in discretionary funds, and it's it's embarrassing, but it's very good for them. Um, but again, if you're older, a traditional IRA may be better. That's a, a great question for your tax professional. Um, if I hope I was able to answer your question. If not, again, I'll be going around making calls to everybody who attended just to make sure that all of your answers have been answered, or all of your questions excuse me, have been answered. Um, next question, can you invest in mortgage notes with less than $10,000 in an IRA? The beautiful thing about self-directed IRAs is there is no limit to how much you need or, or there's no minimum. So if you find a borrower who needs a uh, hundred bucks from your IRA, as long as you draw up the note, you, you come to an agreement where the lender is the IRA um, and the borrower is whoever you're lending that money to, you can lend that person $100, um, but obviously maybe not just 100 because that's, uh, that's a little low, but um, we wouldn't stop you from doing something like that, and I, I don't believe the IRS would either. Um, I'll pass this question uh, to you, uh, Charles. Liability, is it better to buy as an entity or, or, or naturally in, in your experience with your investors? Uh, definitely, well, uh, when you have that's a great question. Uh, I, I would always recommend as an entity, uh, you, it just, you know, kind of like recession proof investing, it just gives you an extra layer of protection. Now, you know, we've seen example after example of not we, I just mean as a country, uh, of, of the corporate veil being pierced. Uh, but, but it certainly takes away a lot of that potential liability, uh, you know, because the type of properties we're buying, uh, you know, we do insure everything, but you know, you get somebody in there and you know, the kids you know, bust in and hurt themselves. Yeah, that could be an issue. Uh, it's never once happened to us, but you know, I, 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 everything I do is through an LLC. I think you answered that way better than I could have. So I thank you for that. Um, next question we have, we're, we're, we're cranking through these pretty well. How often are IRA holders communicated with? So at Cama Plan, um, when you call into, we're, we're pretty focused on elite customer service. Uh, that's probably our highest um, priority right next to the proper record, key to, record keeping, excuse me, of your account. Um, but you'll get an email as soon as the account's been opened. You'll be mailed um, a, a welcome packet. You'll also be emailed whenever any funds or hit your account, whether it be an interest payment, whether it be a transfer, a rollover, a contribution, you'll receive an email. Um, you'll also receive emails if funds are set to leave, and if we have any problems with paperwork, we'll either call you or leave a voicemail or both until we can get in touch with you. Um, and a, another thing about the elite customer service we focus so hard on, if you call into our office, the, that number I mentioned uh, earlier, 215-283-2868, 
You're not going to get a, a dial directory. You're not going to have to wait on hold and listen to uh, Siri and some elevator music. Uh, you'll be speaking to a live person who will transfer you to another live person um, best able to answer your questions. And you'll most likely be dealing with one or two people max throughout a, a transaction that will be specifically helping you um, get your money out or get your money back, whatever you know that transaction involves. Uh, again, I hope I answered your question well enough. Uh, Charles, the next question sounds like it should be for you. The time frame to exit, can you comment on that? Uh, so we, we traditionally like to say that the investments go for, for nine to 12 months. Uh, and, and here's a breakdown of that. Uh, we go to the auction, we buy, we buy the, the property. Uh, and then it can take, uh, on average, it's about two months. It can take, I've seen it take as long as four before the bank actually transfers that deed over to us. We won't even go so far as drop a dumpster on the property until uh, that um, uh, that deed is in our hands uh, or you know in your hands in this case. Um, and uh, uh, so so that's three months, three months to do the repairs and and then call it three to six months on market. Okay, we have uh, another question. I'm assuming this is for for me and camera plan. Um, but if, if you have any fees associated, you can you can comment. I'll make a, a quick comment about our fees. They're asking, you know, plain what are your fees? Um, so our our main fee is an annual record keeping fee. That's just uh, what you'll be paying us annually to to monitor or to keep record of your assets. Uh, and that fee, we actually have two different types of fee schedules you can select from um, to make whatever to select whatever option is cheapest for you. And you're not locked into any of these options. You can always switch from one to the other at any time. Um, but the main, the most popular option is our asset-based fee schedule, which is a flat $275 per year per asset in the account. Um, and that's no matter if that's a $50,000 investment or a $50 million investment, you'll just be paying us $275 per year per asset. Uh, and that is prorated the first year. So um, let's, and that's prorated quarterly. So let's say you don't invest until the third quarter uh, of 2020, you'll only be paying us 50% of that 275, and then you'll pay the full 275 um, at the beginning of 2021 and, and every year following that the asset is in the account. Uh, and another beautiful thing about the IRA is you can either pay the fees and have them deducted out of the, the funds available funds within the IRA, or you can also choose to not limit your buying power and, and pay with a check or credit card, and it's not disqualified because there are administrative fees. Um, Charles, did you have any comments about uh, any fees associated with with your investment? Yes. Yeah, so, so our fees, uh, as I mentioned, were primarily based on performance. Uh, so we get uh, we get either thirty or thirty five percent of the net proceeds of sales. So that's based on your profits only. Um, uh, and, and then there's an acquisition fee on the front end. Uh, the acquisition fee is essentially just a, a, a pass through uh, because on almost every acquisition we make, there's a, there's a buyer's premium that has to be paid. All right, thank you. Um, it looks like we have a, a few questions coming in specifically uh, for you and the PIP group. Um, the next one is the company strong enough cash wise to withstand possible higher numbers of fails during the downturn and still keep to the guarantee. Um, that's specific. It actually kind of fits into one of the questions I had for you, um, with, which is, what is the risk associated to an, invest, an investor into your company? So if uh, that wasn't too much and you can touch on uh, one or both of those in, in as much detail as you can, that'd be great. That's really, that's a great question. Obviously somebody has been on my website. Um, uh, so, so we do offer a performance promise. We do feel we're going to be able to easily maintain that promise. Now that performance promise that for those of you that haven't been on our website is a 16% annualized return on our fix and flips. Um, I definitely, we don't say that guarantee is a very dirty word in our, in our business. Um, but, but yes, we, we have maintained that we expect it to actually improve, uh, because the inventory is going to grow, which means the, the competition is going to come down and by competition, I mean the people you're actually bidding against that at the, uh, at the foreclosure auctions. What was the second part of that question? 
Um, the, my part of the question was, uh, what's the risk associated to, to the, uh, the investment or, the, or to the investors, if there is any? Right. Okay. So, so with fix and flips, the, the biggest risk I feel is, is if we get into a situation where, uh, you know, the investor came in with his ex exit strategy, strategy as being a flip, uh, and then we need to now turn that into a cash flow situation. Uh, because of, of the you know, economic downturn. Um, that's the biggest risk I see. Uh, you know, because we, we keep these in your name and because we have a long-standing history, when we do lose on that 7% uh, of, of what we purchase and, and repair, that always just comes out of our pocket. So we'll, we make that up uh, so you're getting at least that 16% annualized. But to answer the long answer to your question is, is you know, I, I, the biggest risk is, is the exit strategy. That may change, but that's, that's really the, the, the only one I see. Thanks, Charles. We, we have a few questions uh, kind of aimed towards uh, returns. Um, one is asking, you know, what's the typical typical return? Is it a is it a profit share model, and um, are they guaranteed, or and have they been going up or down in the current uh, current climate? I see that's that's really interesting. So so what we've experienced is that people are stuck at home and bored. Uh, so so we had a really good uptick in the sale of our properties. The second week of April, we we had 17 closings in one week. Um, uh, again, not a guarantee, but 16% uh, annualized is is what we promised our investors. Our averages have have been you know just just a little north of 20%. Uh, and, and yes, it is kind of a profit sharing structure. Uh, we, we take, we get a commission on the backside, uh, a performance bonus is what we call it of either 30 or 35% of your net profits. So if, if they, if, if they even wanted to include your $250 per asset as, as part of their cost, they can do that. Perfect. Um, I, I have a question that looks like it's going to be, uh, for me, uh, an anonymous attendee said, I, miss, I might miss the piece of the presentation, but if I do not have uh, $100,000 in a tax deferred account, could I add additional money from my regular cash, or can I partner with someone else to make that $100,000? Um, simple question, but I'm guessing maybe some tax hurdles to mingle tax deferred and non-tax deferred money. So, um, great question, uh, and a lot of things, uh, this is a big thing that a lot of the people I speak with who are interested in self-directed IRAs have questions about. The beautiful thing is, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the presentation, which you might have missed, um, it's the same investments that you can make in your tax deferred accounts you can make in your post-tax account. You can also partner entities. If you don't have enough cash in your IRA um, for a deal that you're specifically looking at, there are a number of different ways that you can, you can obtain or partner uh, entities uh, where you can meet that, uh, that cash amount goal. Um, the IRAs that you have with us, uh, they're the same as anywhere else. So all the same rules apply, contributions, distribution. So uh, you can meet your contribution limit and, and con contribute directly to the IRA you have with us. Or to your question about partnering, you can um, go into an investment 50-50 with uh, your personal funds and your IRA funds, as long as you follow all of those um, prohibited transaction things I talked about earlier. Um, but there are a number of different ways to, to get that money. We even have an article on our website, camoplan.com, called 20 Ways to Fund a Deal, deal and it gives you um, exactly what it offers, 20 ways to fund a deal within your IRA if you don't have that, that cash that you're looking for. Uh, let's see, I think we had another question for you. Is there a different price point uh, between the cities that you work in? No, that's that's where we want to be. Um, so so the price points are about the same. Um, now the 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 volume of on market opportunity in North Carolina has has had an uptick. So we actually have focused more in the Augusta and Savannah markets, uh, and um, soon be uh, dabbling into uh, uh, Knoxville, uh, but. Uh, uh, that that's that's our that's our that, you know that's where you're making the profits is is on those those homes that you know that we're reselling for you know 170 180 thousand dollars. 
Thanks for that answer. Um, we're at 4.03 right now. Uh, how, are, how are you feeling? Do you want to um, take any more questions or are you, are you getting a bit time strapped? No, no, I'm, I'm fine. We'll, we can go as long as you want to go. Perfect. I, I might touch on uh, two or three more questions and, and then we can wrap it up. Um, so this is a, a little bit on the personal end, but it, it could also feed interest into, you know, the things that you do. What makes you so passionate about uh, about your investments and, and and why you really got into it? So I, it's a funny story. I actually fell into it. Uh, you know, I I, um, I was working for somebody who uh, I actually you know this is gonna this is gonna date me. Uh, I was stuffing envelopes for who for a guy that was in the taxing business, and I just I naturally picked it up. Uh, and, and then, you know, that was, that was a few years later, I got the reassurance that it was what I wanted to do when, when all the dot bombs hit, um, you know, I never wanted to have, you know, my resources or my savings dictated by, you know, the, the, the crazy manipulations that go on in wall street. Uh, and I said, like I said, in the presentation, I like tangible, I like things I can touch. So even though I'm very good with tax liens, if I if if it were my money, I would prefer it be in in fix and flips. Uh, so so it really just it was just a natural progression, honestly. Uh, and and honestly, the people in the industry, as big as it is, it's it's you know, my uh, my PR person told me to stop using the word, but it's incestuous. Uh, you know, everybody knows everybody and everybody hires amongst everybody else, whether it's your competition or who you see at the conference and you hang out with afterwards. Uh, it's, it's the smallest giant business I've, I've ever, you know, had the pleasure of working in. Thanks, Charles. Um, I'm going to kind of tag on two questions in one here. Um, if you could say one point that you know average across all of your investors that uh they tell you that this is why they want to do it what would that point be and why would you think this investment would be good for a self-directed plan so so 60 percent of our investments are with uh, uh self-direct iras um and then you know if then we have some cash accounts and then we have hedge, hedge funds we work with um why is this investment um you know the one point uh, because it's real estate uh, you know real estate as long as long as you buy right uh you you it's really hard to lose if you buy right and keep your emotions out of the uh, the investment you're going to win almost every single time. Uh, you know, there's, like I said, there's things that come up that are going to bite you uh, that are just unforeseen, regardless of how good you are. Uh, but if you're able to work in the volume that we work in, uh, you're, you're going to be insulated from that. Perfect that answer. Question? Yes, sir. Um, so I love doing these things, Charles, these, these webinars, because I end up learning just as much, maybe, maybe even more. Um, as the, the, the registrants here. Um, so I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, if we didn't get to everybody's questions, again, I'll be reaching out personally to everybody who registered to, to do a one-on-one -on -one consulting uh, consultation if you have the time, or if you're that eager, you can always reach me at wmucker at camaplan.com or uh, call into our office and speak to me or another one of our representatives at 215-283-2868. Again, that's 215-283-2868. Um, and Charles, if you want to leave your contact information, read it off for the people, just in case they have any more questions or follow-up questions for you. Absolutely. It's, it's my first name, Charles, at pipgroup.com. And our telephone number is 877-335-2529. Again, I talk fast, so let me give you that email again. It's charles at cells, oh, I'm sorry, pipgroup.com. Thank you, Charles. And I, I want to thank you so much for, you know, the time and insight on recession proof investing that you gave uh, myself and, and all the registrants today. Um, and I want to thank everybody for attending. And as I said, feel free to contact either me or Charles with uh, your necessary questions and everybody have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.